Hello, this is Greg from SharePoint Maven. And in this video, I would like to explain to you three different types of sites that we have in SharePoint. Uh, now, whether you create it yourself or maybe IT creates a site for you, it's really, really uh, important to understand what I'm uh, about to explain and show you uh, because different types of sites in SharePoint, they uh, look different and they also have, um, you know, different support, different use cases and sort of different uh, purpose. So uh, let me uh, first explain to you uh, and show you what I'm talking about. Um, so uh, assuming you can create your own site, you typically would navigate to the SharePoint start page, uh, which is what you get to see here. Uh, this is called SharePoint start page, uh, the page that uh, shows you all the sites uh, that you, uh, you know, kind of uh, follow, visit on a regular basis. Uh, but on the upper left hand corner, uh, you would see create a site button. Now, by default, uh, it is enabled. However, um, depending on the governance, you know, kind of situation and, uh, uh, you know, rules and policies within your organization, maybe IT has disabled that button. And in that case, you would just need to request uh, IT, you know, to create a site for you. Uh, but um, let me click it for now. Um, and these are the two options that you get to see now. Uh, I actually earlier stated there are three. Uh, there are two main ones that um, um, regular, I guess, users uh, have access to, which is what you see over here. We have a communication site and a team site. The third option is only available to SharePoint admins. And um, before I explain to you what the third option is, I actually want to explain to you what these two are. So once again, you get to see communication site and a team site. What's the difference? A communication site is a type of site you use for one-way information sharing. So, uh, for example, uh, actually, let's stay here. Uh, let me go to another tab. Here is my company intranet. And uh, it has all sorts of, you know, different types of sites connected to it. Um, but um, some of them are communication sites and some of them are team sites. A communication site is something you actually see right now on the screen. It's a type of site you use for one-way information sharing. So the objective of the site is uh, just to share broadcast information in a one-way fashion. Uh, let me show you a few more examples of um, communication sites. This happens to be a human resources employee facing site. Uh, once again, we're not collaborating here. This is strictly for one-way information sharing. The idea is that in this case, HR department will maintain the content and everyone else within the organization will have a read-only access. Um, just to show you another example, hopefully you get the idea. This one is for accounting team, but this is um, uh, once again, not a private accounting site. This is literally for accounting to share information with the rest of the organization, some templates and uh, reports and SOPs and so on. So that's a communication site. So in case if you just need to share information in a one way fashion, you would create a communication site for everything else. Pretty much for two week collaboration, you would create a team site. And that's the second choice that we have. It even you know, tells you over here, it's uh, for collaboration. And uh, let me show you what the team site looks like. Just like that. All right, here is a team site. Uh, now, uh, a couple of uh, key differences between obviously a communication site and a team site. Uh, um, essentially, team sites have left hand side navigation. If you recall, communication sites were this white screen kind of layout. Uh, actual navigation was on top, uh, but in this case, it's on the left hand side. But the bigger difference is right here. It says it's a group, and it even says there are a couple of team members here. What does this mean? Well, what that means is the, uh, that when you create a team site, or when IT creates a team site for you, you actually get more than just a site. You actually get, let me pull this uh, image for you, you get everything you see on this uh, on the screen right now, on the slide. So when you uh, create a, a team site, you get obviously a site, you also get a group a calendar in Outlook. You also get a distribution list in uh, Outlook, obviously. Uh, you can then connect, the, these two are optional. You can connect them later on, but 
you can connect a Microsoft team and you can connect plan and planner, which is a task management tool. And it's kind of all or nothing. All right. Um, you are not just getting a site, you are getting everything else. And it's all managed by this Microsoft 365 uh, group, which is essentially a membership group. It's a security group. The idea here is, uh, for example, if uh, I am the member and Mary is a member of this group, we have access to all the tools uh, and applications tied to the group. So we can uh, upload documents to SharePoint, we can chat on Teams, we can schedule events in uh, our group calendar, and we can manage tasks in Planner. Uh, let me quickly show you uh, the all of these tools, uh, kind of an apps uh, in real life. Um, so you can even see this, my HR team over here, right? Uh, it's a group and there are two members, so Mary and I. And yeah, let me open some of these other tools uh, so you can see. So uh, here is my, the one in black is my personal calendar. Uh, this is my group calendar. You see, this is where Mary and I, we can manage our Teams meetings, essentially all the events for our uh, group. Uh, let me show you Planner. All right, so let's go to Planner. I actually have it uh, all of this linked over here for you, but um, if you go to Planner application, you would also see it in there. All right, here we go. And this happens to be a plan. This happens to be a plan that Mary and I were managing for that same team, for that same team. And if you go to Microsoft Teams, uh, this is Microsoft, uh, my Microsoft Teams app. Um, you can see the same team with all those different channels that exist in a team. Uh, but once again, the same, uh, just to prove the point, uh, the same, you know, members of the team uh, exist, um, you know, on this team as the ones you saw on a SharePoint site. So the bottom line uh, is that uh, when you create a team site, you get more than just a site. It's kind of all or nothing. All right. Once again, with communication site, you just get this nice looking employee facing site. With team site, you get uh, much more than that. And it's your call, it's your decision whether or not to uh, utilize all of these apps, right? If you don't have any tasks to manage or you know don't need teams, that's totally fine. I'm just letting you know that you get all these applications uh, kind of tied together. Uh, by the way, um, same exact thing happens if you create this group from any other location. So obviously I've been showing you how to uh, create a team site uh, from SharePoint, but guess what happens when you try to create a team in Teams? It creates a team, but behind the scenes it creates a site, a group, and everything else. Same thing with Planner. If you go to Planner and start a new plan, you must associate it with the existing group or, you know, it will create a brand new Microsoft 365 group. So just by creating a new plan and planner, you can actually end up with a SharePoint site and a group uh, and everything else. So wanted to point that out. Now, um, so these are the two uh, kind of, you know, you know, major uh, types of, uh, not major, but uh, two main types of sites that we have in SharePoint. And when you create one, very important, to uh, choose the right type right away, because once you create a communication site, you cannot convert it to team site and vice versa. Uh, with that being said, we have a third type of site and I wish it was available over here on this interface, but this option is only available to SharePoint admins. We have a third type of site. Ironically, it's also called a team site, but that team site does not have any you know, group, you know, components. It doesn't create a group. It doesn't create teams, planner, um, group calendars. It literally just creates a site that looks like this and nothing else. Uh, and there are actually plenty, plenty of use cases for something like this, right? This is for situations when you do like the look and feel of the site and, um, you know, you just um, um, don't need uh, anything else attached, right? No teams no other apps. Uh, let me give you a few use cases for this. Uh, obviously, you know, ar some sort of archive, right? You just need to store documents. You don't need to chat about them. Uh, maybe a site uh, uh, that you want to share with a client. Again, just a site with a bunch of documents uh, and um, you, don't, you really don't need any other assets connected to it. 
Uh, knowledge base is another good uh, use case, right? Uh, this will allow you to create some sort of knowledge base. Actually, let me show you an example over here. Uh, this is uh, the knowledge base that I created, but you will notice it's a team site, but it doesn't have, it has the same look and feel as the other team site. Uh, however, it does not have a group or anything else attached because again, we're not collaborating here. This is really more like a knowledge base of different articles and pages. So how do you create this particular team site? Uh, once again, uh, regular users cannot achieve this. For that, you will need to navigate to the SharePoint Admin Center. Obviously, this is something only SharePoint admins will be able to do. Let me see, uh, let me refresh, here we go. And uh, you go to, uh, obviously your SharePoint admin will need to go to SharePoint Admin Center. And uh, on the active sites, this is where they will get to see a list of all the sites. Click Create, they will click Create. And once again, they are presented with the same choices as regular users, team site, communication site. But there is another option, uh, browse more sites. And, uh, you know, ironically, um, don't even need to go to any other ones. These are like classic site templates. Don't use any of them, just this team site. Uh, ironically, it's the same name been used. It's also called a team site. But if you read fine print, this option does not create a group. You see, it doesn't create a group and, you know, planners and uh, Outlook stuff, just literally a simple site uh, without a group attached, without a group attached. And uh, what's actually uh, pretty interesting about this particular site, so I actually use this type of site with um, many of my clients because, you know, many times they just need, again, to place a store, to store documents and uh, many times they don't need, you know, any other applications attached. But let's say you created or IT created this type of site, you've been using it for a while for documents, and at some point you decide, oh, I wish we had um, maybe a planner attached or a team attached. Not a problem, you can actually connect it to a group at that point. So that's what I love about this site is that uh, maybe initially as you migrate to SharePoint, you maybe start using a regular team site without all this, you know, bells and whistles attached. And then when uh, your users, when your employees become more familiar, more comfortable with SharePoint, you can upgrade them, connect it to the group and connect to teams and so on. So I, I really, really like this particular uh, option. Uh, but again, very important just to kind of summarize three types of sites, um, communication site, a team site connected to the group and a team site uh, without any groups uh, and, uh, you know, uh, additional applications. Uh, very, very important. Each one serves its own, you know, purpose and objective. So uh, very important to pick the right one. So that's all I really wanted to mention in this video. Hopefully you learned something new as always. Happy to see you on my blog, sharepointmaven.com, as well as my YouTube channel. Goodbye.